Earthquake mitigation. To mitigate something means to make it less bad. So in this presentation, we're going to be seeing what can be done to cut down on loss of life during earthquakes. In this picture, you can see the sort of damage that earthquakes can do. And if we look at the whole of the world over the last 20 years, um, we can see the number of people who've died from earthquakes. Um, in 2004, you had the um, tsunami that spread across the Indian Ocean. And in 2010, there was the Tohoku earthquake in Japan. Again, the tsunami killing over 226,000 people. In 2005, we had the Kashmir earthquake in India. And in 2008, uh, there was the Chinese earthquake in the Sichuan pro um, province. However, if we take away these four massive earthquakes, you can see we're averaging um, a few thousand people dying in earthquakes um, over the last 20 years. Now, what can be done to um, cut down on loss of life during these earthquakes? Number one, we can plan for earthquakes. And the most off and the most usual way of doing this is to build earthquake proof buildings. Here's an example. Um, these buildings are made out of bamboo um, within Indonesia. They're less likely to fall down because they're made out of bamboo, which is flexible, and also because of the cross bracing that's been built into the design. Um, this helps the building to absorb the impact of the earthquake. Furthermore, the roof is very lightweight, so if it was to collapse, you'd hope that people wouldn't be um, harmed. And also, all the materials building these houses are found locally, which helps to make it a sustainable solution. Also with earthquake proof buildings, this is the opposite extreme. This is Japan, one of the most advanced countries in the world. Here, it is incredible. They've built this giant shake table. You can see the size of it by the size of the people that are at the bottom of this. This is great because you can build different designs, you can shake the designs, and then you can learn which sort of building shapes and designs can withstand earthquakes. Generally speaking, with earthquake proof building design, you want foundations that can absorb the earthquake's energy. Often rubber, rubber shock absorbers are put into the base of the buildings or even wheels. So if the building um, is separate from the ground it's standing on, it'll be able to absorb the impact um, of the earthquake. Don't just have concrete, reinforce it, make it strong, or use materials that are flexible and will move with the shaking um, of the earthquake, um, such as using steel frames, because steel can bend rather than shatter. Um, have water and gas pipes, pipes that are flexible to avoid breakage. Have electricity cables with slack in them, so that they won't snap or break during the shakings of an earthquake. Finally, you can have counterbalances, large weights at the top of the buildings. So when the building um, shakes moves one direction, the counterbalance will swing the other direction, keeping it standing up. Here's an example of an earthquake proof building, the Transamerica Pyramid Building in San Francisco. Now, during the 1989 earthquake um, in San Francisco, this building moved about a metre from side to side at the top, but stayed standing, proving um, it's capable of surviving an earthquake. Next, um, try to predict earthquakes. Unfortunately, it's impossible. Uh, we know where earthquakes are going to occur. We do not know when they are going to happen. So it's actually impossible at this present time to accurately predict when an earthquake can happen. Instead, we can do two sorts of things along the prediction front. Uh, number one, we can mark where all previous earthquakes have been and produce a hazard map. Now, when, what we're actually looking for is areas along known faults that haven't experienced earthquakes in a long time. These areas are the ones where we might well get earthquakes in the future because there could well be pressure building up.
When we look for areas that haven't had earthquakes for a while, but in an area of a known fault, um, these areas are called seismic gaps. Now, the next thing that we can do is when the earthquake actually starts to shake, um, it's possible to give um, a number of seconds warning to places that are further away from where the shaking has started using the Internet, using SMS, using sirens. During the 2011 earthquake in Japan, um, people in Tokyo, the capital city, had about a 30 second warning that a, an earthquake was heading their way. Why? It's because of P waves and S waves. Um, let's chat about this a little bit more. When the ground gives way, when the earthquake um, starts to shake, um, initially there is a burst of energy that is moved through the ground sideways. And this is called a P wave or a primary wave. After this initial burst of energy, larger rolling waves move through the ground away from the earthquake focus. Now, the primary waves move quicker, but the secondary waves do more damage. So what we can do is we can have scientific machines that record the arrival of primary waves, and this will give us a few seconds of grace until the secondary waves, the large rolling waves that do all the damage will arrive. And this is the way that those people in Tokyo um, were given a little bit of warning that the large earthquake was about to arrive. Finally, tons of things we can do for um, prepara pre preparing preparation before an earthquake strikes. In this example here, I'm just going to go through two. Most earthquakes will not kill you. Most earthquakes will not destroy um, the whole of your house but they may well cut out electricity, they may well cut out gas or water supplies. So people can put together an earthquake survival kit, a go bag or a grab bag, full of things that will help them to survive in the hours and days following an earthquake. And you can see within this bag some examples of things that could be kept. The other thing we can do to prepare is do regular drills, regular practices of what you might do during an earthquake to help you survive. Um, one thing school children might do is immediately go underneath their um, school desks to protect them from a collapsing roof. They might drop, cover and hold on in order to be safe. In Japan, they have Disaster Prevention Day every year where on the 1st of September, workers and school children will practice their drills. So in summary, we can't predict earthquakes. But we can try to lessen or mitigate their effects through planning and thorough preparation. Earthquakes don't kill people, buildings do. So what can we do to make those buildings safer? And what can we do um, to make sure people are prepared? Thank <laughs> you.